Welcome to Learn by Theory, a brand new series for the coding noobs out there. <laughs> no. Yep, I'm talking to you directly right now because Unreal Engine is getting quite popular and there are a lot of new artists coming into Unreal Engine without the sufficient programming knowledge. And you're over here, mix that with this like crazy desire to have followers and likes and views and what do you do? You just skip all this and go directly to my interact courses and then what you do you just start taking all these courses and then you start posting on instagram and saying oh i just made this and i'm so smart and this is my original algorithm and bro stop it get some help come on it's not your code and the the issue with this is that you're never going to be any better than a watered down version of an original creator's work, right? And so you, let's say, you finish up all my courses. Now, because you have no clue what you're doing, you just jump onto the next Patreon creator, right? And then you start ripping off their project files. And because you don't know what the you're doing there, you're just gonna move on to another Patreon creator. And you're just gonna be like, prostitutizing your creativity to another Patreon creator. And the thing is, all the artists that you respect, and we don't care about your work, okay? And I, and I would say that no one's gonna hire you either. So the fact that you skip this part is really like not helping you at all. And what kind of like delusion do you have that you can just skip that and somehow you can figure it out? I don't know because like here, it took me two years, you know? Like I took CS from high school and the first two years, I didn't know what I was doing, man. You have to pay the dues. And of course, you guys are thinking like, well, then why don't you like explain a bit more here? I am addressing this issue by creating this new series where I will talk more about this section. Okay, so now that the rant is out of the way, let's dig deeper into what this section entails. So what you have to know, first of all, very important, you have the start and the end point. It's not a straight line, okay, it's not a straight line. It's actually quite a cyclical process where you will have different points where you have to make decisions and you have to take the right path in order to arrive to the result. And of course, the issue with the learn by doing stuff is that I'm already showing you something after I've already taken this decision and so I'm not really showing you the decision-making process that I took in these different points just as a visual example. And of course, if you don't know this, these places where you make decisions is what makes a programmer. And so of course, you're gonna be most likely lacking that. And of course, also it's a cyclical process where sometimes, yes, you'll know that this is the right path, but then sometimes you'll go here and you're like, oh crap, that was the, right, the wrong path. So you're gonna go back and then start again. And then you might even go here and then you have to go back. and you'll know that even as an experienced programmer, you're gonna make quite a few mistakes. And then you finally reach here. So that's what it looks like. All right, so as I've said, we're not gonna be making anything that I've already made because that would defeat the purpose of showing you my decision-making process. So at this point, as I'm recording, I have no idea what the final result is gonna look like as we're gonna be going through the whole process together. Okay, next up, one of the most important things that I want you to understand right now at this moment is that yes, indeed, we are making art, but we're not making art, we're making applications. The process is way more similar to software development, right? And so if you come with an approach like, oh, we're just gonna start with a blank canvas, we're gonna get in the flow, and we're just gonna put some things down, and let's see how the muse takes us. We, we cannot do that, because if you did that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna make poor decisions in the beginning where those poor decisions are gonna come back and bite you later down the line and that is how you make code, okay? And so really your code is only as good as your plan or your strategy. Obviously, you don't always have to make a plan if you're working on something simple, you can keep track in your head, but as you introduce more blueprint classes and those blueprint classes have different kind of relationships, different calls, references, you, you're just gonna lose track of stuff and you're gonna make mistakes because of that. And so at some point you need to start 
putting pen to paper and make a plan or a diagram, as you can see here, is what I used to do. But I wasn't a plan of this inefficient process. And I wish that there was a tool, but there wasn't. So I ended up making a tool called Code Site. It's called like that because a plan is a foresight into your future implementation. Now this will become a brand new perk as part of your Interact membership. You'll have access to it. And we're gonna be using this for this current course. Okay, once you have access to Code Site, we can get started. So in this course, we're going to be using this example in particular, the useless machine. You should know what it does. Basically, the switch, you turn it on, the arm comes out to turn it off, and that cycle repeats itself with different intervals. You'll see in a moment the finger comes out there. There you go. Now, since this is code and it can be modular, and if we code it well, which we will because we're going to plan well using our editor, we should be able to scale up the number of switches and create an example like this. And basically, once you start thinking like a programmer, what you immediately see is these are like instances of a blueprint switch, and you can have arrays of these to keep track of the values, right? Now, the next thing I'm gonna ask you to think about, and I'm gonna ask you a question, what do you see when you have this kind of visual example? And for me, what I see is, is that there's a switch here, four main components. First one is switch, second is the arm, third is a lid, and there is a state machine that either keeps track of whether the lid is open or closed, or whether the switch is on or off. And this is one of the abilities that you need to have, is when you have a problem or an idea, be able to deconstruct and pick out the constituent elements that make up the system. And that gives you the reference to knowing how many blueprint classes you need, you need to make, uh, where to put the code, and that gives you an idea of how you're going to make the stuff, right? Instead of like just going with it and starting from scratch and not really having a plan because these, all these systems are interconnected with each other and that's why planning it is incredibly important. So let's go into the editor and get started. Okay, so here we are in the editor right now. It might seem a little bit different depending on when you're watching this video as I could be making some updates to the UI, but the functionality should remain the same. So let's create four classes and we'll span them out. And the first thing I'll have to say as a disclaimer is that this course is going to be a little bit messy because, as I said, I don't really know what I'm making right now. As in, I do know it, but I don't really know because I haven't made it yet. So I'm going to make, you know, a few mistakes for sure. And so please keep that in mind. So first of all, let's rename all of this. So BP switch for the first one. Then the BP lid or the door, whatever you want to call it. BP, this one should be the arm. And this is the BP state machine, which is a little bit redundant for the single switch solution. But since we want flexibility in the future to add multiple switches, we need this kind of manager, right? This is the manager and you got multiple references of switches and it keeps track of its employees, let's just say. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to create the most basic level uh, of the logic flow. Okay, and so to do that, we need to populate these variables and functions. So obviously the first one we need is going to be switch on. Question mark of type boolean. And it's going to have a function called switch toggle. We can worry about the parameters later. We have switch toggle, great. We have a lid. So it's going to be the lid open, question mark. It's going to be of type boolean as well. And then the function is going to be, let's add two. First one is going to be open lid and close lid. All right, so let's move this up. 
the arm is going to have two functions as well. So move to turn off. So as the, the arm comes out and switches off, and then the second one here is going to be uh, retract to rest position. So rest position, so it's move to turn off, and it's going to go back into its rest position. So it could be retract. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, state machine, let's say we need to get the state of our switch. So we will call this update switch state. Okay, update switch state, great. Now let's start working on the flow. Uh, so actually we are missing us another function, or sorry, another class, because Obviously, none of this gets started if we don't have an input method. So, bp mouse click. So, this acts as the hand, basically. And you can do this and do line tra trace for switch. Okay, line trace for switch. And it goes and does the switch toggle. And if it's the return is true. We're going to open the lid. Once we open the lid, finishes opening, we need to tell the arm to move to turn off. Okay, and after it turns off, of course, it's going to call switch toggle again to turn it off. So do that and then click and add in the reroute node over here. Okay, and of course, right. As soon as we do switch toggle, we need to update its switch state. Okay, and that goes in, and this path, let's just say it's false, so it's going to be switched off. We will go here, okay, here. The state is false. We need to tell it to retract to its original position for the arm, and after that's completed, we will force it to close the lid, okay? Let's add in another reroute node and put it over here. Okay, and so that's basically it. And you can see that it's such a simple function, but there's so many like flow of in information and executions, which makes planning incredibly important. So that's basically should be how the baseline logic is. So here we go. We go and click. And this returns, hey, switch is on, opens the lid. After opens the lid, it moves turn off. That goes here and switches it off. Here is off, so it doesn't trigger a open. So there's going to be like an if statement, right? And so it's going to go here and updates its state. The state returns that, hey, it's actually off. We travel here and retract to rest position. And then after that, we go in and close the lid, and this is where the loop terminates. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a very important question once again. Now, on the surface, everything seems perfect, makes a lot of sense. But do you see any kind of critical flaw to this current system? Well, now, for me, um, yes, indeed, look. This is going to work perfectly fine if the user will interact with it in, in a way that it was exactly designed. So anything in the normal operating window, but that just like rarely ever happens, right? And this is like kind of always a topic that we talk about between like other developers or like some kind of experience where, you know, some users came in and did some something really crazy that, that didn't make any sense. And so this is part of like, at least what I like to use, and some of my friends like to use, is called idiot proofing or kid proofing. Now, kid proofing is like definitely the first thing you think about, and then secondly is the idiot proofing, um, because you you would not imagine the things that people will do uh, based on the environment, of course. Um, and so you know, of course, kids are gonna do crazy stuff that can break your code. You can have people that are like slightly older, maybe I don't know who knows, drunk, came out of a party. We have no idea. And those people can completely mess up the code. And those are called edge cases, right? And I already have an idea which are going to be the edge cases. 
Um, but what we can do uh, to make it a little more friendly for you, uh, we can actually start coding this in Unreal Engine. And then as we already have the code working, we can induce those bugs. And then we can see where it's happening. And then we can go ahead and update our diagram so that we can uh, accommodate those edge cases. And then with the new plan, we can make updates to our blueprint code. So let's go and do that. All right, so if you made it this far into the video, it seems like you're up for it. So if you want to keep learning and watching the course, click on the next video.